The Rise of African Currencies – Why the Dollar is Losing Ground The emergence of African currencies is one of the main changes in the fast-evolving global economic scene. Emerging economies in Africa have become the new global powerhouse in terms of economic power in recent years. Due to this change, there is now greater demand for African currencies since they are thought to be reliable and appealing investment opportunities. Welcome to the Afro Page. Before we dive into this interesting discussion, let me remind you something. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any newly uploaded videos. And hang on till the end of this video so you don't miss out on any interesting parts. Now let's move on. For more than 75 years, the US dollar has served as the global reserve currency. However, in an effort to cut costs, avoid sanctions, and reform the global financial system, several nations are now attempting to trade in local currencies. Since the end of World War II and the creation of the Bretton Woods system, which was called after the United Nations Monetary and Financial Conference that was held at Bretton Woods, USA, the US dollar has been the world's reserve currency. The US dollar is the world's reserve currency and is used in international trade and finance the most. African countries are now more inclined to take action to break away from American supremacy by strengthening their own currencies or inventing new ones that would be utilized for intercontinental commerce since the US dollar is becoming less significant in international trade. For this reason, we shall explain why African countries are moving away from the dollar. William Ruto, the president of Kenya, is quickly gaining popularity after criticizing the US currency in several speeches. The cultures, traditions, religions, and lifestyles of Africa are incredibly diverse. The continent's diversity has been a cause of conflict for many years, despite the belief held by some that it provides the foundation for togetherness. Government focus has shifted from growth to security as a result of this circumstance. However, if done correctly, a single currency for all of Africa will enhance trade by enabling individual nations to focus on their areas of strength and swap them for other items that other partners can produce more effectively. If adopted, nations in the region will not have to worry about exchange rate fees while moving and spending money between nations. Some of the most significant outcomes of the African single currency will be visible to us, including complete price transparency across national borders, heightened consumer beneficial competition, and a lack of the expenses and inconveniences associated with exchanging money between African nations. On top of that, considering the type of supply shocks that the continent experiences, Africa would be an excellent choice for a single currency. The president highlighted that there is no reason Kenya ought to pay trade transactions with other African nations in U.S. currency. In Djibouti, during the signing of the bilateral trade agreement, he declared that Djiboutians could buy goods and services from Kenya without needing dollars and vice versa. He went on to add that Djiboutians only needed the Kenyan shilling while Kenyans needed the Djiboutian franc. Everyone in attendance at the signing stood up and applauded him. According to the president, Africa should encourage the use of local currencies for trade-related payments rather than U.S. dollars. The objectives are to support local currencies and help African economies and businesses become long-term self-sufficient. The African economy, comprising 54 economies in 2021 was forecast around 2.7 trillion United States dollar in nominal terms, according to Africa, the Statistics Times. Commodity prices have influenced Africa's growth. The continent provides around 70% of the world's diamond trade, 10% of the world's oil reserves, and a third of the planet's mineral resources. Although there is no denying that this has historically aided growth, the reliance on a small number of vital commodities and their global price has increased market volatility, particularly with regard to several of Africa's currencies. By 2035, 10% of the world's oil and 9% of its natural gas output will come from Africa, which will continue to be a major producer of both commodities. A single currency will greatly boost trade within Africa, as well as trade between nations and regions, even if it is limited to cross-border transactions. The region's financial issues, such as the difficulty in exchanging some of its currencies, will be lessened with the adoption of a single currency. In this sense, in order for investors and consumers to fully benefit from the single market for goods and services, a single currency is required. In my opinion, 
The adoption of the African single currency will have a good impact on the process of structural development that is needed for all African nations. What do you think about it? Will it be useful for the economy? Will the African countries be able to benefit from this procedure? It is true that these changes will have a significant impact on the African market's potential for growth and competition. The African Export-Import Bank is reportedly developing a system that will enable traders to settle payments with local currencies. When integrating payments during cross-border trade across African countries, local currencies will be utilized. The president said he was not against the U.S. currency, but he would trade in the USD while doing business with the U.S. Yes, for sure, this concept of adopting a particular country's currency while trading with the nation was not a discussion that popped up in recent years. It was a long discussion over a long period of time. In 2009, during Gaddafi's presidency of the African Union, he suggested that the African governments switch from using the US dollar to the gold dinar. Many countries are now drawn in by this idea. The BRICS alliance has drawn interest from nations all around the world. For those who don't know, BRICSEEs is the collective term for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. The idea of having a single currency has been discussed by the BRICS countries. Its goal is to streamline and accelerate trade transactions among the five members of the union by acting as a basket of their respective currencies. Kenya is one of the countries aiming to join the BRICS group and utilize the new currency in international trade. Yes, it is sure that the US dollar might suffer greatly if the majority of the BRICS nations adopt the new currency. The majority of participants in the single currency debate demonstrate a high-level awareness regarding the benefits of a single currency for economic development, including enhanced transparency of prices, decreased inflation, decreased financial risks, decreased transaction cost, decreased trees, exchange rate fluctuations, and enhanced currency stability that affects trade within the region. More efficiency is being achieved as a result of the continuous process of transforming the African economy from a collection of tiny, highly divided national markets into one that spans the continent, which will benefit investors and consumers equal. Moving on, concerns about the potential economic effects of U.S. sanctions are fueled by emerging economy support for their own currencies and economies. When almost 20 countries, including Algeria, Egypt, and Ethiopia declared their desire to walk away from the U.S. currency in 2023, the de-dollarization movement gathered strength. The first step toward implementing a single currency is the agreement for the African Continental Free Trade Area. It is believed that this crucial multilateral agreement will serve as a foundation for sustained continental integration and development. The East African Community, or EEC, is creating the East African Shilling, a regional currency. It is required of participants in the African Continental Free Trade Area, or AFCFTA, to conduct business in their home currencies. A decrease in obstacles to international commerce and investment will probably prompt an increasing number of small and medium-sized businesses who have usually restricted their operations to the home market to explore the markets of other countries. The African market is expected to see increased competitiveness and resource allocation as a result of these microeconomic concerns. Do you know? African countries are attempting to stop doing business with the United States in an effort to completely remove American dollars from their economies. Sudan has made it clear that it wants to strengthen its ties with Russia, and the central banks of the two nations are now discussing ways to resolve disagreements amicably by converting to national currencies. Perhaps Moscow could provide much-needed oil and grain to Sudan, while Sudan could provide cotton, fruit, and dietary supplements to Russia. William Ruto, the president of Kenya, is reportedly calling on African leaders to adopt the Pan-African Payments and Settlement System, which was introduced in 2022, and to stop using the USD for intra-African commerce, according to media reports. The economic sanctions imposed by the US-European Union as a result of Russia's actions in Ukraine are the cause of the movement's recent increase in popularity. The demand for the de-dollarization of trade, that is, for transactions between two nations, to be conducted in currencies other than the US dollar has not just come from African politicians, but also from leadership in developing nations across the world. During an official visit to China in April 2023, 
Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva claimed to have made an impassioned plea for countries to engage in currency exchange, asking, why can't we do trade based on our own currencies? This followed reports that China and Brazil had decided to stop using the dollar in their bilateral trade. According to some reports, Argentina, another South American nation, has also chosen to use renminbi, RMB, or yuan, China's official currency, to pay for Chinese goods. In the meantime, the Reserve Bank of India has approved the invoicing and payments for international trade in Indian rupees, INR across 18 nations, including Botswana, Russia, Fiji, Myanmar, Israel, Malaysia, and Singapore, the Indian government declared in the Raja Sabha in March. Following Russia's special operation in Ukraine in 2022, India and Russia set up a rupee-ruble trading system so as to evade the consequences of the Western sanctions against Russia. But in May, the system was put on hold. According to the print, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov had claimed that this was because Russia had billions of rupees that were creating issues for the nation. Even after a long discussion, you might still have a doubt. What is de-dollarization? De-dollarization, to put it simply, is the practice of trading in any currency other than the US dollar between two countries. Professor Biswajit Nag of the Indian Institute of Foreign Deal Trade explained the significance of the deal, stating that it would save the costs involved for parties as they wouldn't have to exchange local currencies for US dollars. If country A buys goods from country B and pays for it in a local currency, the cost of a double exchange rate that is the cost of converting country as local currency to USD and then converting USD to country B's local currency to complete the transaction would be saved, he added. Nag went on to say that such trading could take place only in the event that there were sufficient amounts of the local currency on hand. But remember, there is something that many have not considered. The adoption of a single currency could result in a tremendous centralization of power in the hands of a select group of people and a massive monopoly of decision-making at the level of the African Union, thus threatening one of the organization's core values, individual liberty. The limited concentration of public attention on short-term events is disappointing. Long-term structural changes in all fields, but particularly in the financial markets, are often overlooked in the public eye. The demand for the de-dollarization of trade, for transactions between two nations to be conducted in currencies other than the US dollar has not just come from African politicians, but also from leaders in developing nations across the world. In an exclusive interview with the print, the South African High Commissioner to India spoke out against the domination of the U.S. dollar, USD in the world economy. His doubts about the USD's status as the world's reserve currency for international trade were not unique. Now, let's take a look at a few countries outside of Africa that have also chosen to abandon the U.S. dollar. According to Saudi Arabia's finance minister, discussions about trading currencies other than the U.S. dollar are welcome in the country. The Brazilian government announced in the middle of April that it had made the decision to deal with China directly in their respective national currencies instead of using the U.S. dollar. The Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN finance ministers and central bank governors discussed about using local currencies for trade instead of the yen, U.S. dollar, euro, and sterling in financial transaction. As President Xi Jinping's visit to Saudi Arabia signified the birth of the petrol yuan, Credit Suisse analyst Zoltan Pozar notes that China demanded in December that Middle Eastern suppliers adopt its own currency instead of the dollar in oil trades. In the meantime, Russia has stepped up its de-dollarization efforts during the past year. In March 2022, Putin signed an executive order prohibiting unfriendly nations from using any currency other than the ruble to settle natural gas transactions. Along with the other BRICS nations, Beijing and Moscow have also consistently promised to introduce a new reserve currency that they believe will be able to replace the dollar as the world's reserve currency. Many people believe that fiat currencies such as the dollar, euro, yen, and British pound are less stable and reliable than gold because Western governments have been printing too much money. As fiat currencies become less prevalent, there are still too many obstacles in the way of any one cryptocurrency being a universal currency anytime soon, especially for nations in South America and Africa. However, cryptocurrencies are posing a serious threat to national currencies like the dollar.
Then is there cause for worry across the U.S.? The International Monetary Fund reports that since the turn of the century, the weight of the dollar in foreign exchange reserves has decreased from 71% to 60%, suggesting that the world is gradually weaning itself off of the dollar. Recently, Brazil declared that the Chinese yuan had overtaken the euro as the second largest currency in its foreign reserves on March 31st, which heightened concerns that the reserve position of the dollar might be in danger. However, the IMF reports that despite China's de-dollarization campaign, the yuan still only makes up 2.7% of total foreign exchange reserves. As a result, experts doubt that a competing currency will overtake the dollar anytime soon. In a research note released on Tuesday, Goldman Sachs stated that the yuan, which is controlled by a government that has strained ties with most of the West and is pegged to the dollar, will never be able to overcome the high hurdles to attain the top status of the global transaction currency. Finally, the dollar is the global reserve currency and is used in most international trade and financial transactions. Moreover, many African countries have weak currency economies which would make the transition to a dollar-free economy difficult for them. However, African countries anticipate that giving up the dollar will bring them a variety of benefits. As a result, their operating expenses would decrease. Furthermore, it will promote African economic integration and decrease the likelihood of U.S. fines. Because the dollar is the preferred reserve currency of the entire world, the United States has a great deal of influence over the economies of other nations. What do you think about this de-dollarization decision? Will it be useful for the world's economy or will it be a disaster? Don't forget to leave your ideas in the comments section below.